This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Despite what the well-known phrase would have you believe, there are actually three constants in life. Uh, there's death, there's taxes, and then there's an overload of adult games on the Switch Z shop every single week. Oh my god, it's gotten bad. I love the Nintendo Switch, you love the Nintendo Switch, we all love the Nintendo Switch. But you see, therein lies the problem. Too many people love the Switch. Nintendo Switch has games! Yeah, d but does it though? Some of these developers should be exiled to an abandoned island. You'd have thought that I would have learned by now, but nope. Years and years later, exploring the eShop remains to be one of my favorite things to do on the Switch because, man, you never know what to expect. Like, I, I see Super Mario RPG here and like, oh, that's super cool. Let's see, let's see what else has come out recently. Oh, what the hell is your future to future prediction? I gotta know. Oh, of course, it's a visual novel that skimps on both the visual part and the novel part. Because yes, there's released on the American eShop and the only language is Japanese. Why? Why are you like this? So, against my better judgment, I decided, why not? Let's continue this journey on looking at the absolute worst things I could find on the Nintendo Switch eShop. I found 50, that's right, 50 of the worst games you could find on this eShop, and even worse than that, I spent money on them. Now these aren't the absolute worst games you can find on the eShop, because quite frankly there's a lot of shovelware on there, I could look at AAA clock 50 times and that would be it, but no, I wanted some variety. Uh, 50 bad games are still 50 bad games, give me some slack, I went through a lot. And you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the end because, oh man, we're going places. Just a heads up though, this is not gonna be counting the large chunk of really low hanging fruit that is flooding the eShop nowadays. Games re releasing with a brand new banner on the top every single week to highlight some stupid bundle. Cloud games, because those are just dumb. I, I don't need to say more that they're just dumb. Typically, if you see the word simulator in the title, it's a red flag right out of the gate. Plus, there's this new influx of using AI art to advertise your game, which, holy sh. That's gross. Just be grateful, please. I still played 50 garbage games for your entertainment. Variety is the spice of life, and damn it, I want this video to be spicy. Not like it won't be immediately outdated anyway. A few days before this video went live, we got the Monty Mole collection. Not to be confused with Mario's Monty Mole, because that guy is a lot more distinguished. It's a bunch of old Commodore games. Like, it's cool for game preservation, sure, but man, these games are rough. And then, oh boy, a few days after this video goes live, we get Milk Cellar, which... Jesus Christ! By the way, did you know that Monty on the Run has an absolute banger of a theme song? I take it back, I'm buying Monty Mole Collection immediately. I'm here to entertain you, I'm here to inform you, and I'm even here to protect you from the horrors of the Switch's eShop. But even still, I can only protect you from so much. But thankfully, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, who's always got your back. Haha, <laughs> I got you. You've been ad read. VPN, that stands for Virtual Platypus Network. Essentially, when you activate a VPN, you. Wait. No, yeah, that's right. When you activate a VPN, you are more secure than ever before. Certainly want to keep your online identity safe from the internet threats and weirdos out there. There's plenty of that. And Surfshark VPN is just the key to accomplish that end goal. One click of a button and bam, all the information sent between your device and the internet is now encrypted and protected from cyber criminals and big companies that tend to sell your data because, oh man, that's really messed up. Surfshark's clean web feature allows you to safely explore the internet while blocking ads, trackers, and malware attempts which is great, but if you want to be extra careful, Surfshark also has an alert software that can give you real-time alerts if it notices anything fishy. Plus, you know, you can virtually travel to whatever country you desire to bypass certain blocked websites or even access content libraries that your native country may not offer. Checking to see the insanity that certain countries allow in their digital marketplaces extends far beyond video games, this morbid obsession runs deep. Oh my god, I can't believe he did that. The lovely folks over at Surfshark VPN are now offering you guys a great deal. On top of their 30-day money-back guarantee, viewers can also get up to six months free with a coupon code. Enter promo code ANTDUDE to get up to six additional months for free at surfshark.deals slash ANTDUDE. That's ANTDUDE at surfshark.deals slash ANTDUDE. That's a lot of ANTDUDE. You're sure to remember that to get some free months of VPN. That's one hell of a great holiday deal if you ask me. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video, and now, bad video game time, baby, let's go. 
Listen, I know game development is hard. It takes years of blood, sweat, tears, a lot of money. Like, I, I totally understand and I sympathize with that because even if your game is good, there's no guarantee it's a success. But if you're putting a game out there titled, I wasn't about to remember this, uh, Mountain Bike Hill Climb Race Reel Physics Fun 2D Arcade Speed Drive Dirt Racing Games and you expect it to make you some money? Ah, uh, man, you gotta stop. Oh yeah, I have a controller now, by the way. Let's take a look at this. It is a limited edition, officially licensed Nintendo controller that comes in collectible packaging and includes a steel authenticity card as well as a collectible pin. It is pricier than a standard controller, but it directly supports me, independent artists that made this possible, as well as their businesses. And plus, come on, it does look kinda sick. Link to get your own down below. So many games release with abnormally long titles, like what? What are you trying to accomplish here? Nanzo action game, risk your life to get your dinner back. What do you mean? All right, let's see, gotta pick my icon first, of course. Gotta decide which incredibly low quality PNG suits me at this very moment. Uh, I'm definitely thinking low poly cow. All right, let's see what this game's all about. Okay, so in this game, you can reach speeds no mortal should. Holding right doesn't simply move you, but just you keep accelerating, you, you just hold the button and you, you just keep on moving until... Okay. All right, you rock bastard, you're going down. Okay, okay maybe not. I, 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 I genuinely don't think they expected anybody to play this game for more than three minutes and get to this boss because like, it's just standing there uh, and this music is like really epic, but I don't... I can't, I don't know how to attack it. I, it just, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Hit him from the back, hit him from the front. He just stands there menacingly. I don't know what to do. Guess I'll just try to break the all time speed record instead. I will do whatever I need to to get my dinner back, baby. The Great Battle of Shark, Monkey, Squirrel, Dinos, oh, Dinosaur, two S's, Bird B. I wonder if that would fit on the side of a switch box. Probably not, I don't know. A long time ago, before the last days of this planet, when all the humans left Earth and this solar system, an event happened. Oh, oh, oh sh <coughs> not an event. Turns out a crazy virus broke out and random objects have been given life. In this era, the planet is now dominated by the five rulers. Twin cells, a seaplane, a grand piano, a pickup truck, a drone, and a stove, that's, that's six. That's six things, not five, but okay. Yep, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, of course, it's a bad 2D platformer with bad physics and controls, and then it suddenly transforms into a free fall section out of nowhere because, you get it, flying squirrel, showing that the devs didn't realize that flying squirrels and normal squirrels are actually two different things, but don't worry. Collect the melons, damn it. Oh, and there we go, there we go, there's the shark part. Uh, you know, it's not like these games have no effort put into them, but like when you have a title like Shark Monkey Squirrel Dinosaur, di wait, Dinosaur Bird Bee, what, again, what, what do you think was gonna happen? I don't know, it's still at least better than the string of blatant asset flips that we've covered before. The Bullet, Time of Revenge, Max 2, Reloaded, Hammer 2, Reloaded. They are legitimately the same exact game with the most minor of differences here or there, like this one character model's different. Ooh, that's worth the whatever money they asked for. Dude, they didn't even change the keyboard button prompts in this one. Like, come on now, how are these still available for purchase? I don't understand. Why even try in life, you know? Hell, Angry Bunnies is an incredibly obvious low effort ripoff as well, but at least that was free. It's when you have a game like Splat the Fruit here that cost $15 that I start to reconsider my life choices. I can't believe I spent money on this. I just wanted to talk about it again so I can justify that purchase because oh my God, that was stupid of me. Honestly, despite looking at Bullet years ago, I never actually looked at who's responsible for this atrocity. Turns out the publisher is Pix Arts. I I hate them. Oh, this lineup. Oh man, oh man, this lineup. You know, I get it. They say don't judge a book by its cover, but I I'm gonna be judging all these by their covers because man, you can tell these guys just did not care whatsoever. I don't know, man. What if you just shut up and give Gorilla Big Adventure a shot? It gets pretty good 20 hours in. Wait. Wait, hold on, the Golf Royale, this, that's, that's, is this legal? That's just the dude from Zootopia. Eh, well, of, of course I had to give it a shot. Oh, oh man, I wanna die. That's not even the same Zootopia guy. I've been swindled. Use touchscreen. Yeah, sure enough, the game does not work while the Switch is docked. This is a portable only experience. Thank God, because I wouldn't want anybody to walk in and see this on my TV anyway. Keep this in mind, okay? Submitting games for official release is a process. They don't just happen, okay? That means someone took this software, sent it off to Nintendo, and there is somebody paid by that company to go... 
yeah. Pixarts also released Dinos and Ghosts, a terrible Pac-Man clone, perhaps? It kinda looks like an ugly Pac-Man. Let me just read this overwhelming amount of instructions real quick and uh, oh. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no, this ain't Pac-Man. Okay, okay, so I lied. I didn't actually read all those instructions. That, that was quite frankly, that was a lot of text. So uh, from what I can ascertain here, you kind of crush anything that you want, but certain things don't give you points like the green dinos. You got to aim for the ghosts instead, which are X dinos, I think, because, because sometimes the dinos change color and maybe these weird ball dishes have something to do with it. I don't know, I'm just fighting back the vomit real quick because I keep hitting a solid surface like an idiot and the camera goes absolutely crazy. <laughs> you, Dino. Oh, and also, on the topic of undocked only games, Amazing Mage. Why? Why must you make it difficult for me to capture footage of you? All right, I'll set the, I'll set the stupid camera up, okay. Hey, wow, a terrible Zelda clone. Cool. Ah, damn it, I died. All right, let's go back to Golf Royale. I, I, I should actually give that game a shot. Yeah, I regret that. This happened last time with Strike Daz Cans too. Nothing about these games need to be handheld only. Why, why did you, why did you do this? I hope you lose money on these projects, okay? I'm sorry, sorry, that was mean. I didn't mean it. I, I, I kind, I kind of meant it. But oh, thank God, Crazy Bus works in TV mode. Yay. Uh, is the, um, is, is, is the sound working for this? The game is, the game is dead quiet. Oh, Jesus. This seems like a pretty brain dead game to me. Grab a bunch of guys, drop them off in their appropriately colored circle. Fine. Okay, I, I can do that. I'm ready for the actual game now. Oh, God. Oh, my God, this frame rate. What, what do you, what do you mean? Oh, no, now the cops are after me. No worries, let me just, uh, excellent. Now the cops are dead. Crazy Bus just rots of that mobile game-like stink. It's all about accumulating points so you can upgrade your setup to make the next run less painful, despite doing literally the same exact thing over again. Grab these bunches of multicolored guys, bring them to their appropriately colored stop over and over and over and over and over again, oh my god. And no, the map doesn't change. I'm 10 levels in and we're driving on the same map every single time with these random NPCs trying to get in on the multicolored people pick up action and I won't stand for it. Maybe this whole changing your car's pink color thing to avoid the cops is like a real way to get away from them if they're chasing you. I, I wouldn't know, I haven't tested it. Maybe this is just a bad lesson, I don't know. And you dare the absolute gall of you to besmirch the name of Crazy Bus, the all-time classic? How dare you? That's a cow. There he is. Is this gonna get me demonetized? Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, let's -a go, baby! Press and hold the A button to milk. Get to the end in one piece, and also be sure to hit the random guys with milk for extra points. I'm definitely getting demonetized. I guess in the world of auto runners, there are certainly worse, and I do appreciate just how stupid this is, but uh, yeah, it's... It's a bit rough. Plus, every time you get a speed up power, the screen starts to shrink and it's making me sick. No thank you, this is rotten milk. But I understand, sometimes making it really tough to control your jumps ends up being the main selling point of your platformer. I mean, look at Bouncy Bob here, where you have to commit to each jump like it's a 30 year house mortgage. Wipe that stupid grin off your face, Bob, you prick. We already talked about Angry Bunnies once in this video. We can't have two games with Angry Bunnies in it. That's past the quota, it's unnecessary. But I hear you, y'all wanna know if Bouncy Bob is better than Joe Jump. Yeah, actually, Joe Jump gave me an aneurysm. This is one of the most BS auto runners I have ever played. Things are popping up and falling down out of nowhere. It's impossible to properly plan your jumps. Your axes are unreliable as all hell. Why do I have to hit things? Why do I have to throw axes with an arc that can barely hit things? This is the, I hate this. This one stage took me over 100 lives to get through. I want Joe Jump to jump into an active volcano. And I feel kind of bad. You know, initially I was confusing this game with Jumping Joe. No relation. You see, this game is actually a pretty decent high score challenge. Just jump to the left or to the right, that's it. Just how long can you last? It's not that weird that we have a platformer with the words Jump and Joe in the title, but it's definitely weird that it happened twice. Hey, do you remember Crocs World? Talked about this one a few years ago, actually, so I've already been sitting on this one for quite a while, and, uh, you know, nothing new has gone on in this universe. I'm still just mad because that ain't Croc. That's not Croc. I know my Croc. That ain't Croc. This is Croc. Don't you dare say his name. But I bring up an older game that I've already covered to once again talk about Elva, the Eco Dragon. First off, damn, these moves. 
Bro is killing it right now. But secondly, back on the topic of asset flips, I managed to find this stupid dragon in another completely unrelated game. Don't get it twisted, I haven't 180 on this abomination all out of nowhere, but still, a development is a development. Clearly there aren't that many uses of Elva out there in finished products, but I was browsing Steam one day and... <gasps> confirmed. Elva is shameless and will literally take any acting role that comes its way. Disgusting. But you know what? After trashing this game last time, I realized that I never actually checked out the climate change tutorial here in the main menu. Seems like it would be hilarious. And if it's not, I still want to know. I want to learn. You mean to tell me I went two years without realizing there was also a whole ass adult dragon in this game? That can shoot water for some reason? Oh, uh, you know what? Maybe this game is not all that bad. Nope, yep. Yeah, it is. Hey, look, I understand, okay? As a YouTuber, there are sometimes these things that I say and it can get people a little bit upset. I apologize for that, but hey, if you want to settle our scores in a different way, may I suggest Madness Brutal Fighting? We can 1v1, it'll be very clean. I won't cheat, I promise. Look at it. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, dude, graphic design was totally my passion. How could you tell? Really putting the Elva the Eco Dragon menu on notice, I tell you that. Man, all of these fighters are just like staring into the camera with the same exact expression, except for Hanzo. He's too cool for that. He's got a pose. I appreciate that. Oh man, the action is really heating up. Come on now, who doesn't love Hanzo? He's the only fighter in this entire game who can afford a gray square for his avatar. This dude's clearly got money and he knows how to use it. I especially dig the whole no shadows in this lighting engine thing here. It really distracts you from the fact that basically every single fighter plays exactly the same. You might think though, oh, what about the specials? Surely these characters have those. I have no idea what that did, but at least the game does support local co-op. I got lost in these instructions. What am I supposed to do with the Joy-Cons? Uh, detach them, put them away, and then grab another pair, despite also supporting the Pro Controller? Why, what, why'd you, why'd you animate this? All right, this is where you lose me, madness, brutal fighting. This lack of quality control will not stand. I only play games of the highest quality here, like Vroom in the Night Sky. Is here a camel there? I've never seen here. Tut, damn. This fairy girl's talking something deep right now. Oh, oh wow. Okay, this is a lot to take in. I, I don't know what to comment on first. Who invited Splatoon to this? This is one of those instances where I found an eShop listing that blew my mind at just how absurd it was. It gave my morbid curiosity some really nasty flare-ups. Two people, rather than playing alone, more than playing together. Yes. If you want a good time, I'm telling you, every single sentence on this page, it's, it's both hilarious and also giving me a headache at the same time. Pinball at a high place? Golf? Roll the big ball? Sometimes you can hit your friends to save them. We are looking for brave men who can clear all stages. Ha! Sorry ladies, no girls allowed. Have more fun tomorrow! Okay, now you see that line is great. I want that on a t-shirt. So, of course, I had to see what this game was about, even if it was th $30. God. Oh, oh my God. Oh man, what is this? Oh, why, why would someone do this? It's okay. We still got the, the boulder dodging game and, and avoiding the sharks in the boat. Uh, and then there's, there's rolling the big ball. Uh, that, that part of the description was true. Oh, I guess the problem is I'm playing this game solo, you know, clearly it's meant for multiple people, as we've already gone over, two people rather than playing alone after all. But I feel like if I ever subject more people to this, I'm gonna go from two people to alone real quick. How much time is left in the video? Oh God. Another publisher that I've highlighted in the past for all the wrong reasons is Sebek Limited. I hate Sebek Limited. Maybe you would be thinking to yourself that the fine folks over there that brought us piano featuring songs such as Old MacDonald Had a Fram, the ever exhilarating Tennis Go, the guitar app with a Windows screenshot in the eShop listing, Stupid Night Vision, Popeye, would provide us nothing more than greater hits. It's been a few years, you know, clearly there's development time here that's going on to something grand and extravagant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to... Bingo. 
you know, the hot retirement home game where you just sit there for three hours and wait for all of your numbers to be called? Yeah, all of your numbers. Not a straight line of numbers, no, 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 no. Literally your entire card. Those are the rules now. I'm sorry, Sebek makes the rules here. And it took forever. It took so long. I sat there for what felt like 30 minutes. They kept calling numbers and not a single character on this screen was getting numbers. I was losing my mind, but finally, I did it. I've officially won bingo. I think I'm going to pass out. I hate this company so much, man. They're just out here releasing seven lines of code on a weekly basis and calling it software throughout the entirety of the Switch's life cycle, and they're just gonna get away with it, scot-free. Life is unfair, but obviously it's not just them. There is so much low effort garbage on this eShop, dude. We have calculator, a calculator with multiplayer. There's the other bingo, not to be confused with Sebex bingo. No, 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 never would do that. Triple A clock, we're all familiar with triple A clock. Holy sh it's triple A clock, damn it. It shows up like every week on the eShop. I have to see what all the hubbub is about. And it's just, it, it's, ju it's just a clock with a ton of different skins as paid DLC, brother. The Switch has a clock built into it. Hell, at least with Clock Simulator that I've also covered in the past, it's still dumb, but at least you got multiple timing-based minigames in there. That that kind of makes it worth it. Okay, you know what? That's not doing AAA Clock justice. There is a minigame in here, and it's terrible. But hey, maybe the sequel, AAA Clock 2, because I found out this exists, will provide more of that time-telling goodness as well as a brand new minigame. And hey, look at that, it does. This time it's like a Mega Man kind of thing. I think I've had more fun just watching a grandfather clock that's broken. And actually, now that we're on the topic of numbers, here is Snake of Math's cool education game. Gotta do the math real quick in your head so you can move on to the correct number and keep on going. And then how far you can go, ho ho, gotta get the highest points possible. And it gets faster and faster too, it's pretty intense, so be careful. Get all of your math problems right, or you die. Listen, Sebek, Let's all admit that society has peaked with the Popeye punch sound effect and we can move on with our lives. Waifu Impao. Oh no. All right, I'm taking a big risk here. Gotta be very selective about what I show because I, uh, I feel like I'm already testing the limits of what's gonna get me demonetized or not. So in this highly acclaimed title, you run around as a generic woman 3D model with an outline and with your water gun in hand, you completely obliterate any other woman out there because they lack outlines, I guess, on your quest to I don't know. Just touch all the glowy spots on the map, I think. I, I think that's the entire game. Everything the light touches is your kingdom. Okay, wait, no, no, no. Okay, I got it. All right, here's here's a line. Here's a line for you they can take out of this video. <coughs> oh, wow. I can't believe Waifu Impact looks and runs better than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. There you go. There's your meme, have fun. I'm not oblivious to the fact that there are clearly a lot of degenerate games available for the Nintendo Switch. Just check out the recent releases section on the eShop. There's there's gonna be something there. But like, they're, they're just all so bad. Like why, you gotta give the degenerates some quality. It doesn't make any sense. They're the ones that need the most help. But if you like these types of games, then hey, more power to you. I'm happy for you. Or I sympathize with you, I don't know. It's just a matter of how you're feeling that day, I guess. At least you're not as bad as Nintendo Switch eShop game, The Last Hope, a Last of Us clone that was so blatant of a ripoff that Sony themselves got the game delisted. Oh man, to be a fly on the wall of these completely legal and corporate meetings that these companies are having between Nintendo and Sony, like, okay, one's making Mario, the other's making Spider-Man. These really huge games, oh, they're gonna sell millions, and they gotta sit there and discuss the validity of The Last Hope and Waifu Impact. <laughs> Video games are so stupid, I love them. Oh yes. Would you believe me if I told you that I've actually never played a single Souls game? Nothing against them, I've just never gotten around to it. But hey, there's one available for the Switch, right? Maybe my chance will finally come one day. And that's not today, we're playing Souls Land instead. Oh, did I win? All right, fine, let me go after him. Yep, okay, definitely won. I mean, this is how a Souls game works, right? With your weapon of choice, you walk towards this fantasy-filled environment, towards enemies holding random weapons, and just mash and dodge your way to victory. This seems pretty accurate. Not gonna lie though, it is actually kinda tough. I'm getting my ass kicked out here. Oh, wait, did they, did they all decide to give up? Oh. Goodbye then. There's not even like a structure here. It's a title screen of a list of every single level in the game, no unlockables, go. Go through the level, beat the same boss at the end of every single level to unlock the portal to the end, unlock, once again, nothing, and just pick another level if you feel like it. 
have fun. Oh, you know, you can do what I did and uh, just bypass the barrier and finish the stage without beating the boss, too. That's fine. Oh, no. We really said this was a completed stage, didn't we? But hey, credit where it's due. I spent like 20 minutes trying to break this one level because man, it just seemed like this biggest stage. I was able to get out to the barrier and I wanted to just break it. I wanted to just climb as high as I could, and but man, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Kudos to you, developer. I couldn't break your game. Now, considering I haven't played another Souls game, I guess I can just go around saying now that this is my favorite one in the genre. I might keep it that way because I feel like that's just gonna piss off Souls fans in the funniest way possible. I don't know, bro. You really should get around to playing Elden Ring. It's super good. And eh, I don't know. Is it? Is it like Souls Land? Ski sniper. Oh boy. You see that guy trying to go skiing? You gotta, you gotta snipe him. It's like Duck Hunt, but with people. How fun. I don't know what's worse, okay? Like the entire concept of this game or the fact that it doesn't matter if you blast this guy out of the air. The next guy goes down for a ski too, just to test his chances. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Ant Dude does nothing but play cartoony platformers. Let's keep it edgy over here, you know? 3D at Van Time. Looks like this could fit the bill. Maybe. So we got a first person shooter with a time bending gun. Okay, like a little puzzle game, like Portal. Okay, I like Portal. Let's let's see how this goes. Our first quest is to get these three keys to unlock this door. Easy peasy. Pretty linear game here to get to the keys, but uh, some of the puzzles actually got me a bit stumped. I'm surprised. So if this is the tutorial, I can't wait to see the rest of the game. All right, I got all three keys. Now it's time to unlock the door. Hey, look at that, a winged car. That's kind of cool. Let's get in, fly off to the actual start of the game. What? Okay, I don't know, maybe the game glitched. Uh, let me just, let me click continue here. Back at the door, get into the car, fly into space! That, that, that was the whole game. This, this was, it was five minutes long to complete, and it cost me $10. $2 a minute? No thank you. I know enough math to know that that is absolutely disgusting. And what the hell does Advantime mean? And you know what's really messed up? Advantime is a lot shorter than The Mysterious Adventures of Michael. That game is way longer. You all know about Michael, right? You ever used to get really desperate in a computer class back in school so you would try to sneak in some gaming from a sketchy website and you would play it because that's all you had access to? Well, yeah, that's the Mysterious Adventures of Michael, but this one costs money. As you can tell, it's a 2D platformer. That's the best thing I can say. The controls are floaty beyond all belief, but damn it, you can move left and you can move right and you have a jump button. This is a platformer and you can't tell me otherwise. And less than 30 minutes later, it's over. So yeah, about three times as long as Advan Time was. Good morning, Michael. Daddy, I just had a very fun dream. On um, did you? Let me hear about your dream next time. All right. And Michael's dad was never seen again. Believe it or not, just because your game is pixel-based doesn't mean you're allowed to make your game really annoying because people always talk about how rough some old games are. That's not how this works. Speaking of, Super Ola and the Lost Burgers. The world is being taken over by meat. Uh, go get burgers, I guess. And, and wow, it's bad. <laughs> Bro, what year is it? What? 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 This is such a fever dream, man. Like, the shop is a ripoff of Wonder Boy. We got this Sonic-looking ring when you finish a stage. One of the hot dog bosses was a game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, which I found out is a real thing. And this level of pure insanity would be great if the game was fun. And it's in this video, so of course... It's not. It sounds like a great selling point to have the most unhinged platforming experience the world has ever seen where you play as this thing. But to put it simply, it just controls so poorly and it's littered with far too many beginner's traps. It's not fun. It could be charming, but instead, it's just bad. I hope Super Ola never gets his burgers and gets old yellered behind a shed. Of all the pixel games that I've had the pleasure and or displeasure of playing during all of these struggles, two stand out above the rest as holy sh**. What were you doing? That bird, bear, squirrel, dinosaur thing from before gets close, but no, even worse than that. First off, Dear God, which is an appropriate title because those are also the words I said while playing this. So get this, okay, you're a hunter, right? You get killed by a wolf and that hunter meets the Deer God. And now you're a baby deer, okay. Ooh, is this a story all about teaching people the wrongdoings of hunting innocent animals in the wild? No. One of the first things I did was kill some wiggly thing here, and then I moved on. I have learned zero lessons. So in typical fashion, you move from left to right. Okay, I kill another hunter. Okay, cool. And then I just keep moving right. I, I just keep on... I, I, just, I just keep on moving. That's... 
it, I think? It's hard to really gather exactly what's going on here, like there's some platforming, there's some puzzles, there's some story elements, but like nothing melds together and makes sense. I just continue to go right because video game logic dictates I do so, and that's all I'm working with. Eventually, I met a shockingly gruesome death, met the deer god once again, and now I'm... Um, an otter? What? And now I'm stuck. I think I softlocked the game because I can't jump out of this. Great. Uh, oh dear god. <laughs> Valentina, oh yeah, here we go. Off to a really great start choosing a font that doesn't have all the characters you want to use. Excellent. I fear of something might happen with the kingdom and the fool Joao. What's we gonna do, Valentina? I know that I ran from the castle, but I need to save my parents. He have that madness that will impress me, becoming a great knight. I had these lines written down and I like, I knew exactly what I had to say and it was still a struggle to say those sentences in one straight run. I guess the gameplay is almost Zelda 2-esque, side-scrolling action RPG with safe towns and enemy-filled exploration. But man, what a surprise, it's really bad. The controls are terrible and delayed, the art style can't decide how big pixels should be, the enemies are mindless attack sponges, there are leaps of faith and random mazes all over the place, the only thing, the only thing that is kind of a saving grace is the script, because man, the absolute state of it. It's like a dictionary was thrown into a garbage disposal. The kingdom of Grelfrorist are being attacked, and our rulers was took. The Prince Valent is too coward for take some action, so someone have to put a end in this monsters. Dude, I'm telling you once again, that was so hard to say, and the amount of squiggly lines that my script threw at me when I wrote the exact quote down, oh my god, oh man. There he is. All I'm saying here is that I think we're giving Vroom in the Night Sky way too much flack here. Like, yes, it is bad, and also features insane dialogue, but surprisingly enough, it is a lot more competent than a lot of the trash that we have now. We really had no idea just how good we had it back in 2017. Because say what you will for the launch window games of the Nintendo Switch, Vroom in the Night Sky is infinitely funnier than Breath of the Wild. Leave a comment with the word tut if you agree. Alright, now this next one? This one kind of broke me, I'm not gonna lie. Some of these games just really push the limits of what's even legal on this eShop, right? Like, am I crazy in that? We have the Zootopia Fox, that's already a whole big can of worms. We still have Pizza Parking available on the eShop, which has the Final Fantasy Victory jingle. I, I don't I don't really think Square Enix gave that one the okay. And, but then, here we have a, a skateboarding with Maxwell, the cat, and that's Ugandan Knuckles. And the eShop just says, Knuckles the Echidna. What are we doing? Skateboard drifting with Maxwell Cat. Over the years, I've come to appreciate Maxwell. Look at him. Looks like a good old boy. He's got his own game. Cool. Here's some footage of a terrible skateboarding game that I'm going to continue to talk over because yes, it's just straight up playing running in the 90s. And if I don't keep talking, the video is definitely getting taken down for sure, dude. I'm pretty sure there's only one level in this game, but every time a different song will play and it's totally random because the next time it was playing this rap song that samples Toxic by Britney Spears and I just like, I, ca I can't, how, 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 how did this game not get delisted immediately? Sadly, I couldn't get around to playing as Knuckles. I just couldn't unlock him. To do so, I would have had to keep grinding out this one stage for points over and over and over again. And quite frankly, I am one away from doing a kickflip out of a window from the tallest building I could find. Maybe if there was multiplayer, it would have been just the right amount of stupid with friends on a random weekend, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to do that. I gotta just sit here playing the game by myself like a damn hooligan. That's, that, that, that's just the Grand Theft Auto jingle. I can't, I feel like I'm having an anxiety attack. The game did also get a release on the PS4, so hey, you Sony heads can play it if you want to, but I don't think I can put myself through this on a second console. I think I'm okay. Plus the Switch one is called Skateboard Drifting with Maxwell Cat, the game simulator, while the PS4 one is Skateboard Drifting Simulator with Maxwell Cat, the game. I don't know what these names mean, and once again, the word simulator, red flag, red flag, abort, abort. Oh. Oh, dude, hell yeah. Okay, on the topic of legal shenanigans, oh my god, dude, Shark Shark. Dude, it's Shark Shark! Okay, on the surface, or I guess under the surface because it's underwater, 
Haha. Uh -huh. This is just a mediocre arcade game where you're a small fish, you eat smaller fish, you become bigger fish, and then you can eat bigger fish. We've all played games like this before. It's not good, but it's relatively harmless. But dude, oh man, this, this game shouldn't even exist because man, I got a story for you. Shark Shark, of all games, was once believed to not even be possible on Nintendo Switch because actually it was once a highly anticipated title for a different console, the Intellivision Amico. Oh boy, okay, history lesson. This guy here, Tommy Tallarico, well-known liar and scam artist and sometimes made video game music, acquired the rights to the Intellivision name back in 2018 with the hopes of reinvigorating the brand in a grand way with a brand new console with its focus set towards family fun. Something that, I guess, no other consoles are providing, but okay. The console featured a controller with the screen on it. Something that, you know, has historically worked before. The physical games were NFC cards that unlocked a digital game and not actual physical media. Plus the games were apparently NFTs, something that they never really elaborated on, but okay, that was a selling point, I guess. But the real crux of all of it was its content was going to be exclusive. Maybe a game from somewhere else was gonna show up on it, but it would still have content that you can only get on Amico. This whole thing is honestly a giant rabbit hole. The console is never coming out. They have a failed mobile app. They can't afford to actually make the console anymore. It's just a mess. And there's content out there that explains things far better than I ever could. But the bottom line here is it didn't matter how low quality all of the games looked, some of which were confirmed to be garbage flash games from websites that have existed for years. Tommy T over here really fought to defend the claim that these games simply can't not work on any other console because of the extra screen, and any other Amico features are integral to the game's very existence. So yeah, Shark Shark is available on the Switch now, and I feel disgusting for having supported it. A few other Amico games are available too, which is both hilarious and sad, but it's just nice that these play a very minor role in a pretty giant story in the entire video game industry. There's historical value to Shark Shark on Nintendo Switch, damn it! Oh man, that was therapeutic. Okay, what's next? Drawn to Life 2, oh man. Oh, no, this one just makes me sad. I really liked the original Drawn to Life games, man. This gives me no pleasure to talk about. If you've never played Drawn to Life before, it was a series of incredibly simplistic platformers on the DS with one game on the Wii, where the selling point was the player's ability to draw in many of the game's elements, and even your character. And this was part of the overall franchise's plot. And that even includes a SpongeBob crossover of all things. It's perfect. It's crazy how Sonic was playable in these games, man. I wonder if that's legal too. Gameplay-wise, they're not amazing. Once again, they are very simplistic platformers, but they were really charming and have accumulated a pretty niche fan base. With the last game releasing in 2009, it was a great surprise to see it return back in 2020. And they screwed it up! First things first, the art studio, it's as good as you can expect, it's got plenty of features that are very similar to the original games, but it's a pain to control, an analog stick just doesn't cut it, and there's no touchscreen support to boot. That's nice. I still drew Sonic though. Even gave him a party hat this time. Oh, happy birthday. But the story segments last far too long and offer nothing of substance, the platforming feels incredibly slow, and rather than have it be a standard platformer, it's now a puzzle platformer, with absolutely soulless level designs and mechanics and clashing art styles. Oh, but see, you can place enemies in some of the levels now because hey, it's a game all about your artistic vision. You can make it whatever you want. No, no, okay, no. This is not drawn to life. These games were always childish, but at least they were somewhat engaging, you know? If Two Realms ended up being the deciding factor as to whether or not this franchise continues, it wasn't worth it, man. Dude, why do they ruin both this and Scribblenauts when they brought the series to the Switch with brand new games? Like, why did we have to ruin both franchise and one swoop? This is more depressing than the original ending for the next chapter on DS. Because yeah, if you know, you know, Jesus Christ. Preventative Strike, it's, it's just a terrible shooter. That's, that's it. Also, there's Hello Kitty Cruisers. Uh, that game goes on sale like a bunch, so if you want a really terrible car racer that only has a few tracks, it plays terribly, and for cheap, then this is the game for you. Uh, but once again, that's, that's all I got. Sorry, I just, I felt like we needed a palate cleanser. Oh, oh boy, here we go. Back to Nikki the Home Alone Golf Ball, Joy. When I first played this game a few years ago, quite frankly, this was one of the most anxiety-inducing experiences of my life. You are a golf ball, you want to get to a party, and with these weird aim and shoot mechanics, this lack of precision was making me lose my damn mind. Just let me, just let me out of the stupid pile, just, just let me out of the stupid pile of hay, I swear I will burn this barn to the ground! Oh, and the voice acting, mwah, exquisite. Last time, you came here it was through the roof. Good luck finding it. You know, the roof. The thing upstairs. This might be actually one of my most hated games of all time. The only game to get me so angry at how it controls 
I was ready to snap my controller in half. People tend to say that when a game is like slightly irritating, but no, I got, I got really close with this one. This is, this is no joke. All just to get to a party I didn't even want to go to to begin with to watch Nikki throw down some sick dance moves. I'm so angry. And you're not supposed to be angry with golf. Golf is supposed to be more soothing. Who wants angry golf? Uh-oh. Dude, this golf ball is f***ing pissed. How many shots will it take you to get to the goal at the end of the stage while avoiding all of these bombs that are just everywhere because they're gonna make you more angry? Gra. Now, I'm just speculating here. This is no definitive claim or anything, but I feel like all of these assets are stolen. I have no basis for any of that, but just look at this. I just, it, I have, I have a hunch. At least give the text an outline, I'm begging you. I'm not necessarily angry playing Angry Golf. I'm just disappointed. Now I just fell into this weird rabbit hole of finding a few games that just remind me of some terrible games I covered in the past. Like, oh great, cool, the trauma's coming back all at once. If you remember, I once talked about Tiny Racer a few years ago, the lowest rated game on Metacritic from the year 2020. Arguably the worst thing that happened that year. And yeah, it's pretty bad. Just this nonsensical racing game with bad physics and track designs lacking all cohesion. That whole worst rated game on Metacritic thing is mostly just because barely anybody reviewed it. So I guess to the developers out there, take this as a badge of honor, congratulations. Because look, this isn't good at all, but I'll do you one even better. Need for Spirit Drink and Drive Simulator. Drink and drive simulator? There's that dreaded S word again. Don't we already have GTA for that? It is absolutely insane to me to have this as the title of the game, let alone what the game actually is, because whatever, this has been a thing in some mature games in the past, sure, whatever, it, it's just a part of a bigger game, but no, this, it, it just says drink and drive simulator. I'm waiting for the hot new wrestling game that's called Yes Actually. Please do try this at home. Here's how you can give your little brother a stone cold stunner in the middle of your school playground. That'll be $10, please. In this adventure, you are a driver holding a ton of drinks on your truck, tasked with bringing them to special parties and venues. And luckily, the only thing that's in your way of a good time is a swamp filled with a ton of conveniently placed wood to give you a bit of an obstacle course. How fun. After, no lie, just 10 minutes of driving in roughly a straight line, two of those minutes of me being stuck on this bridge, that was fun, you then have to drive back to the original location while under the influence. I guess, uh... Cool. Yeah, under these circumstances, the world suddenly turns into more of a fisheye lens and then the draw distance drops dramatically. Perhaps this is more realistic than I gave it credit for. Good for them. There's no enemies. There's no cops. All that's stopping you is wood and a time limit. Get to your garage for this party and then it's time to do it all over again, baby. Except now you can't see in front of you. Uh, don't drink and drive, kids. Stick to Grand Theft Auto where it's safe. I've also previously covered this 3D platforming duology, Woodle Tree Adventures, one of the most fascinating cases in all of my years of garbage eShop game research. The first game is super bad. Very slow and floaty, nothing feels good, nothing looks good, the camera sucks, it's just really bad. So color me incredibly surprised when the sequel turned things into an open world platformer with much faster and more fluid movement and like, Damn, this comeback story is crazy. It's no Mario Odyssey, but you can very obviously still do a whole lot worse if you wanted a lower cost platformer to add to your arsenal. Something more like Ducky Quacky. Look at him. Just look at him. We're already looking worse than the first Woodle game, so that's a great start. Guess we couldn't afford music for this one either. I don't know what I prefer, stock music pulled from a freely accessible library, which is, is totally fine, or just no music at all. But I gotta tell you, my immersion has been obliterated with this silence. My immersion with Ducky Quacky is gone. You play as the duck. You collect the apples. You do a whole lot of waiting. Just a just an ungodly amount of waiting. And you just meander your way to the end of the levels. No real challenge, just go. I almost got kind of excited too, because look, a shop to buy some accessories. I love when games do that. And I can't afford anything, nor will the game tell me how many apples I actually even have on me. You're tearing me apart, Ducky Quacky. But maybe I'm being too harsh. I'm clearly not the right demographic. Maybe this is successful at being baby's first platformer. Maybe there's a smooth transition from Goo Goo Gaga to Ducky Quacky. And this will now become someone's favorite childhood video game character and we'll hear stories about it 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Who knows? I would give the edge to Jumpin' Joe, personally. Hey kids, do you like Minecraft? Well good, we're not playing that. We're gonna play survival, baby. Look at this face. 
Boy, I can't wait to jump on in and play it. All right, you know, I've played stuff like this before. Gotta start off getting wood. Every single one of these types of games starts exactly the same. You see, one of the things about Minecraft is that it's just too easy to understand how to control. Here, it's different. We control our character independently from this cursor, which is actually used to pick things up. It's like real life, you know? It's not easy. You can't just punch trees and then boom, you have a house. You gotta work towards it and pick up every single log of wood individually in order to build your stock. God, I'm pressing the plus button as much as I possibly can. I need help. Dear God, I need help. No, not dear God, not dear God. Radiation Island. Ooh, this time we got a survival game with a bit more of an adult edge. Let's go. In the middle of the Devil's Sea. Someone starts spitting into the microphone. Oh no, this is awful. All these islands are disappearing. There's a bear, a village. Uh, was, was that a guy? I couldn't tell, was that a guy? Even the ship. Oh man, I guess we gotta start working with these tools and get around to living on Radiation Island. Admittedly, it's kind of cool. There's a total structure to this game. There's this book that you have that keeps pushing you towards the direction of progression. So that's nice. Rather than this being a fully Minecraft styled game where you're full of freedom, there is constantly something that you're working towards in regards to gathering and building. Think more along the lines of Dragon Quest Builders. But way more boring. We have covered a lot of video games today that right from the offset were doomed to fail. This is one of the few times that it's actually a shame that it isn't better. You do gain more freedom the further you go. It certainly has a little bit of variety to it. Radiation Island is definitely ambitious, but with how low quality everything looks and feels, it just feels unfinished. It started off as a mobile game and perhaps it works better there, but that doesn't excuse the fact that this should be better. Especially since we already have survival games out there that have a bit more of a realistic to get to it like Valheim, there's no reason why you should look at this and be like, oh yeah, man, this is this is what I'm gonna do in my day. And it's not even like I disapprove of smaller budget games that are blatantly copying a more successful formula. I'm fine with that. Fill the field as much as you want, as long as you got like a neat idea. You gotta get your foot in the industry somehow. Do whatever you want. Just try to make it decent, that's all I ask. It's this logic that led me to Vaccine Rebirth, a game directly inspired by PS1 era Resident Evil, even down to the Vaccine. Ooh, I'm shaking in my boots. Now, aesthetically, it's pretty on point. This whole low poly aesthetic with low pixel count, love it. The tank controls are replicated really well here too. So combined with the low poly aesthetic, you would think, oh, this is a really cool replacement for classic Resident Evil, but sadly, the gameplay just doesn't really work. It's a roguelike. Didn't see that one coming. Your partner is terribly sick. Explore this area and find a vaccine within 30 minutes. Once you leave that front door, your run is now gonna be completely different than the run you just had before. Enemies, items, where the vaccine is, it's all random. There's also no voice acting. If your character ever does speak, it's... What the hell is that? <gasps> Microsoft Samantha, is that you? Makes me almost nostalgic for Nikki the Home Alone golf ball. Oh, I remember. Nikki, I'm just kidding, I'd rather die. But truly, I'm not going into this with negative intentions, I wanna give the game a fair shake. About as much of a shake as my boy here is shaking in his bed. Oh my goodness, he is very sick, please take care of my child. I'm checking out all the nooks and crannies of this facility, constantly getting new weapons and items, and remembering where I've been so I can get back to my partner in peace once I get the vaccine. The combat? Not good. It never feels like you're actually hitting anything here. There is no good response to any of that. That's a big problem. But you know what? That's fine. I found the vaccine in no time flat. My partner's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Oh. What's up there, big boy? You wanna be friends? Off. Yeah. Off. Ah. Off. <laughs> Open the door. Open the door. Jesus Christ! Oh, great. Now I can only walk. No more healing items. Panic levels are rising. Oh, cool. Now the door glitched me right next to him. No! <laughs> E excellent and good. Thank you. So naturally, I dived right back in. Next time, it took a lot longer to get the medicine, but hey, I did it and I saved my partner's life. No big deal, easy peasy. Even if I was being chased like the entire time by the tyrant, didn't matter. At least now he can kill both of us at the same time instead of separately because I just realized there's no other escape from this room. We're gonna die. All in all, it took me three runs to figure this game out. One run to get the controls, one run where the tyrant killed me when I glitched right behind him, that was cool, and then one where I was successful. I guess in typical roguelike fashion, you get used to dying a lot of times in hopes of actually beating the game, but it's just that it's the same objective every single time, and with the 30 minute time limit, you're gonna complete your objective in way less time than that. There's a lack of substance here that makes this really hard to recommend, which is a shame because conceptually, it is kinda cool. But you know what, and this is my genuine true feelings here, I might actually play this game again, 
Am I gonna be okay? Believe it or not, my ultimate stance here when it comes to showing off a lot of these bad games does not have malicious intent. It's just what's available there. I check the eShop regularly. A lot of these developers do it to themselves. While a lot of these games are bad to terrible across a whole wide spectrum, I genuinely think a bunch of these games are now going to be entering my rotation of titles to show off to friends whenever they're around to just show them how absurd the eShop can be. The amount of times I've shown people the Final Fantasy victory jingle in pizza parking, The punch sound effect from Popeye, still a top tier sound. Random crazy mode from Elver the Eco Dragon, it never works, and that's why it always works. I've actually done plenty of multiplayer games in Fight of Gods, and even stupid pooplers. I have subjected multiple people to this game and they're still friends with me, and I don't know how that's the case, but thank you for sticking around. I've even shown people Cowcatcher, okay? Not like the actual game part, like no, yeah, that part is still terrible. Only this unhinged skeleton dancing segment that has nothing to do with the rest of the game. This is easily one of my favorite things on the Switch. And after everything we've gone through today, I can confidently add Forest Crash Party, Madness Brutal Fighting, Vaccine Rebirth, and yes, even stupid Maxwell Katz Pro Skater to that list. How could I not show this to people? I spend money on these games, okay? I'm gonna get my money's worth. Business-wise, how Nintendo allows any of this stuff on the eShop is beyond me, but man, I'm just happy that they exist. For the most part, I want Nikki the golf ball to burn in hell. Just shows that at the end of the day, video games don't have to be taken all that seriously, and whatever you find enjoyment in with this form of entertainment, I say go for it. But then there's Foot Clinic. I'm gonna vomit. Oh god. Oh, oh god. Oh my god. Oh my- oh god, this is disgusting. Oh Jesus. Oh god, how does that even happen? You just took your shoe off and your foot is filled with shards of glass. Why'd you even put the shoe on in the first place? Yeah, let me just get my jellyfish all riled up and I'll remove it for you. So many of these are like these grotesque and disturbing injuries. Like, oh my god, I just- it's disgusting. And why does everybody want a foot tattoo or a toenail paint job when they're done? Some of you had horrific injuries, man. This should be the last of your concerns. Oh, you look bad. Uh, thank you? Oh, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna vomit. That's it, I'm gonna throw up. All right, buddy, your test results are positive. That's great. You're not even the same guy I just checked on. Okay, guess we'll vaccinate you, even though we're a foot doctor. Just gonna spray you down like it's cologne real quick and... Work it. So I think my next plan of attack is I'm gonna take my Nintendo Switch and throw it into the nearest volcano that I can find and then chuck myself in along with it. 